wanted to punish Nigerians for it. He gave Nigeria a sick man as the president. And since that time, since that time, Nigeria has been what? Descending into the abyss. And Nigeria is currently at the precipice of a uh, balkanization. Precipice of a breakup. And the same Obasanjo is now asking the young people to fight for their country. Now he can no longer fight. He's lost all the fights in him. Galina Haba did that. And today, they can tell you that they are the ones that will decide who is going to be president. They are the, going to decide who is going to be the, in the military. They are the one who will decide who will get promotion. If you don't like it, eh, we will deal with you and all of that. And everybody is running about uh, like headless chickens today, including Obasanjo. But the Gali Naaba is dead. And uh, yeah, Nigeria confusion continues. Who would ever believe eh, there is IDP camp in Abuja? Abuja people, you know, they try, you know, they cover things. Apart from the fact that a lot of you are now like, uh, you know, walking about trying to be very careful so that you don't get kidnapped. Eh? So when I get IDP come for Abuja, where people are like, uh, oh dear, no Zamfarao. See that now close your eyes close your eyes i'm serious just close it you remember the image you just saw now the women the children the aged you know the vulnerable the, the you know the sick all of them that you see in that image on your screen okay now yeah just just imagine that in 10 million people like that. And imagine that in at least over 800 different locations across Nigeria. People like that in Nigeria. And they are victims of different terror groups, terrorists. There are those who are hunting Christians, the Boko Haram. Those ones are killing Christians. If you are not ready to convert to Christianity, they will kill you. And if you don't want to be killed, you will end up in those camps, sleeping rough with your children, sleeping rough, sleeping in uncompleted buildings, you know what I mean? Abandoned uh, schools and uh, abandoned facilities where you are hiding, exposed to all kinds of uh, danger, including your children. There are those who are doing that in uh, Northern Nigeria interior. There are others who are killing people because their own jihad is that the land that everyone who is currently living in Nigeria lives, that land, whether it is in Igbo land or it is in Yoruba land or it is in Ijo land, all those land have been willed to them by their grandfather, Uthman Danfodio, 
So living on those in those places, calling yourself indigenous people, is an insult to the caliphates. So there's an ongoing jihadist campaign. All they have to do, you don't really even have to fight anyone. You don't even even have to like say anything. They just come straight to your community, and they can ransack tens of tens of communities in a single night. And Nigeria military will not say anything. So what they do is that uh, for those that will survive, they will become refugees far away from their land, begging to survive. Because these people would like to take over. <laughs> Hello, hello, Sunusi. Dalla in our son, Kanaji Kabioba, Chinghanya, Dika Kagaya, Mamuta, and Echiwa. Dalla Gapula, Ninan Zasu, which is about one co others. I knew Magana, and the Zasu, which is what Kawa is asking. Kagani, Abuba, Chinghanya, and Kar one day, Chiwan Abu, that's not which you are Kawa is asking. The Allah, I be Gazinan Zasa to Hoyan Zoo, the Allah. I be Agaya Mamutani. So when they tell you the government is doing everything, to, they are not doing anything. Don't be stupid, man. They know them. They know the terrorists. They coordinate their movements. They have areas in northern Nigeria that they, that they call the uh, ungoverned territories. These are territories controlled by the terrorists. There are people there. They've chased them away. They've killed those they will kill, and they've chased the rest away out of those places. These guys commit all these genocide, these crimes, and they stay on the crime scene. In some places, they are renaming those communities. They are renaming communities where they are chasing people away. The military, the police, they are all in on it. The terrorists will put a phone through to a commander, a military commander, to warn his boys because they are just passing it. They don't want problem. Oh, they should warn his boys. So in northern Nigeria. I mean, they killed, uh, uh, what do you call it, over 400 people in Plateau states. Guess where people were going? They were visiting Tifnumbu in Lagos, including the person that they, they massacred these people. Fulani terrorists killed these people. He also shattered flight to Lagos to go and pay homage to Tifnumbu. Eh? <laughs> but Nigeria, shattered planes all over the place. They are paying homage to Tifnumbu. Over 400 people killed. And it says the tradition. We'll go to that Lagos, I'll show you. I mean, they all practically just saw themselves in Abuja. Abi, they all work in the same as old rock. So now they wanted to go and pay homage in Lagos. You know, as they were doing the same thing for Bokuari. So Tifnubu to want to enjoy, come and visit me, all of you. 36 state governors. One of, one of them even went there and he started talking about uh, renewable energy. Say <laughs> all over. <laughs> ah! Renewable energy. So they were talking to Kolu about renewable energy because they went to go and greet him. I mean, Nigeria is a complete joke, isn't it? But make it look real for the optic. We are discussing renewable energy like now. In the long term, we just have to come into that. This is the first time in the COP meetings, 27, 28, and co, that a statement was clearly made on energy transition. The previous COP meetings, no clear-cut statement was made. Now, 
What this means now in the, is that in 20 years' time, they'll come to us and say, oh, we can't export cashew to Europe because the factory that process the cashew use diesel to process the cashew, so they won't take the cashew. So there are serious issues and challenges ahead, which we have to mitigate now. But in our own interest, we embrace the um, energy transition for our own economic sake. We export our oil. We should have moved to gas 30, 40 years ago because over 70% of our hydrocarbons in the ground is gas, not oil. And we have consistently exported gas without putting the infrastructure in place to use gas domestically. Uh, in Europe, the cooking gas, the cookers in the kitchen, in the water heaters, all is connected to the gas infrastructure. So, in the meantime, the federal government is expanding the gas um, infrastructure through the AKK pipeline, section two of the um, Western pipeline. So, we will embrace, for us in the states, we'll work with you, Mr. President. Um, we'll also seek the opportunities that are available from the federal government in terms of agriculture, infrastructure. Um, your vice president, sir, is hands-on on agriculture. Um, since he's been in, um, we've seen the we've seen the seriousness in which our culture is, is taken. He did to he did to in the last New Zans Lily. New Zans Lily. New Zans Lily. Did you, hear, did, you, did you see what I told you? Eh? That one a poor state governor. Ask him. That did he discover after eating chicken? Eh? And burukutu. Inside call or maybe he snuffed the cocaine. I've been at the heroin. Then give him. Eh? We don't know what they give him inside call He started talking about COP22. KKKK pipeline. In, in, in Europe. In Europe. They have gas in the kitchen. Say, you see, these are a bunch of clowns that they say, ah, very intelligent. That's a very good idea. All for the optic, all for the camera. Say you get. But go to go to Quara States and go and see what is now doing about renewable energy, bio this and that, and the rest of that. All nonsense. So but making just look like say, ah, Mr. President is working. We went to go and visit him. He's already discussing ideas. We're discussing ideas. I won't worry. That's the same thing. They will pack themselves like that. They will carry themselves so go Saudi Arabia. They will turn on the camera. They will start talking about, you see, especially on the renewable energy, uh, agriculture, in the area of agriculture, in the area of security, in the clinical clinical. Shokoto governor talking about agriculture. I mean, well, I guess those who are going to be in the room, they are them themselves. So Tifnumbu, Bajabia, Mole, the same people where they, they where they left Abuja together. Same people who left Abuja together, left Nigeria together. They will go somewhere, put themselves in a the room, and they will start talking. You see, we have to. We have signed some deals. We have make sure that we are signing some uh, some bilateral agreement and all of that. Mr. President has told investors. They will come go play the video back for them in Nigeria. They will say Tifnubu was having a meeting with investors. Other governors present, they will start mentioning all of these worries. And Nigerians in Nigeria, the Mumus, they too will be reading news. Tinubu met with investors in Saudi Arabia. They discussed renewable energy and how to establish a big plant in Kwara State, $1.6 billion plant. Nobody has a clue of what they are talking about. Oh. But headline in Nigeria says, Tifnumbu and the Kwara governor, they have signed a renewable 2026 energy, blah, blah, blah. And they are going to start a plant with uh, a Kuwaiti gas uh, furniture company. Nobody has. They just say, hey, he's bringing investment. I won't worry. That is why Kolu is now telling them, we need peace. That one are the idiot, oh. Eh? It'd be like uh, Joe Biden when Americans have been uh, kidnapped and they are being killed. They are being like, uh, you know, raped, sold into slavery inside America. And Joe Biden now called his fellow clowns and said, I am, we need peace. I want all of you to make sure that you come up with an idea on how to have peace in this America. And they're going to play the video. 
200 million mumu. That's the Nigeria. When you are bought, just say, my ego are bought, are bought, are bought. This is called also sounding like they are doing meeting about you, the Nigerians. Make life more sacred and educate a group or change your mindset in the circumstances that we have. Uh, Nigeria belongs to all of us and we have to take care of it. I'm glad the faces I'm seeing uh, here today and uh, your Excellency, the Governor of Rivers, um, you know, I read your statement. I say thank you very much for that statesmanship <laughs> uh, broadcast and reliance on peace. It's only with peace that we can govern and governance has started. To some of you, uh, I don't know where, but won't come for Nigeria Unity, a broken shackle that say bye bye to ignorance and poverty and renew our home. Luckily, Open to the man is there. And it's not saying it's home. And we have spared that for all of those. Uh, yes, to many of you, there is one of them. Before you got here, I think to Bakudu and myself, I renew the elements of the body. I will come to your meeting to spell out what am I thinking. We we'll touch on the judiciary payment, judiciary, and the reform. A town hall different from Bala Blue, 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 Bulaba. A town hall. Hello, Nigerians. This is just the beginning. Hello, Nigerians. This is just the beginning. So everybody is now shouting about about mission about about. Somebody was typing no no no. Another will actually do simple instruction. Just say abort. You have you not been watching some of these uh, spy movies? Eh? The moment they say they won't they won't grab you like that, you just you just use a code. A code like code red, code red, code red. Save me, save me, save me. But all of you are just confusing me. No, abort, abort. Uh this, you know what I mean? So anyway. I have decided to abort a uh, mission. That's the Tifnumbu, the president of a country that you are currently witnessing what you are witnessing in today. Oh. Hmm? I'll leave you to the rest. So what I'm going to do next is that uh, I am going to uh, I'll take a break. Okay? And then uh, when I get back, I am going to take calls. So if you are watching us for the first time, I remember you need to also sort of subscribe, okay, so that you can set up your notification. Now, we are over 2,000 of us on YouTube this evening. Uh, well done. Everybody came to service uh, enough tonight. Uh, good. So, but before you leave, all right, if you don't want to participate in the phone call parts, all right, just like the broadcast to show that you are here. I mean, come on. Okay. And uh, when I get back, I will take calls uh, tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Anyway, I'll be back.
Ando, I am bringing you up. Uh, my you might need to check the audio. This is, this is bad. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Mike. I can hear you, I think I can hear you now. And I hope... Uh, no, this is not good. This is not good. There's always something wrong with your line there. And I, I couldn't really figure it out. When you speak now, it's going to be... Hello, like, Mike. Oh. Okay, go on. Let's let's try it. How are you? Is it better now? I think it I'm is fine. now. Yeah, it is better now. Uh, is that Paul, by okay. the way? Yes, this is Paul, my ego. Baba, how are you this evening? Good, good. I'm fine. Good morning. Oh, good morning to you. You're already probably on Thursday anyway. Yeah. Baba? Yes, yes. Well, my ego, um, again, once again, I want to appreciate you for everything that you do. Thank you for the the great the great expose. Um Aketi has gone to sleep. That's right. Uh, we we thank God that um at least he is one of those governors we can still say we have something small we can remember him for. Let me put it that way. Uh, because he was the only governor that actually stood against the the Ruga madness the open grazing madness that wanted to completely make the rest of the Yoruba governors do side. He was the one that really rallied around and woke everybody up that ah, we can even if we say we are stupid, we can't be that stupid. That this people should just walk over us. No, no, it's it's not possible. So at least he, he gave us that um, he gave us that memory, despite all his uh, all his uh, shortcomings. Yes. Yeah. So he has gone to sleep. Well, having said that, my so the point I wanted to actually bring out tonight is that you see, everything they suffer, everything they face, there's always the solution in their backyard. Whether he had blood cancer, he had the uh, prostate cancer, look, my ego. The, the stupidity of the Nigerian leaders is just sometimes it's just unimaginable. You have access to money, to resources where you can pump in to do even do research on even what you, you are suffering. Mm -hmm. It is not a mistake that Nigeria Nigeria keeps producing keeps producing one of the best or some of the best doctors in the world. It is not by mistake. But our foolish leaders will still fly out to other places. And those places where they are flying out to, those places are seeking Nigerian doctors to come and work for them there. The thing is just, I don't just understand the, the madness. Sometimes Nigeria is, be, Nigeria is totally beyond logic. Honestly. It is beyond logic. I don't just understand there's a there's a research there's a research on 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 cassava for healing prostate cancer cassava anybody can google it there's a research on it cassava goes in on those states there that's right where akeredolu was the governor why didn't he pump in money to do a research on it so for the all the years he spent with everything he was suffering quietly, mm -hmm. he couldn't even think of, ah, let me even build one hospital. At least I will know that I'm the one that is being treated dear for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't just understand. The thing is, I don't, it is, honestly, it is beyond logic, my ego. It is beyond logic. It's unfortunate. And the, the painful part is that the others will refuse to learn. They will still not do it. They will still not. That is just the, that is just the one that baffles me the most. They will not. My like when things happen to us mm. or happens to other people, we are supposed to take lessons from them to improve our own lives. That is how a normal reasoning human being should be. But look at everything that has played out. They don't learn from their predecessors. They don't learn they at don't. all. Oyebo will make they even do what? Paul Oyebo billionaires. Once they are getting older, God knows what they are suffering from. You just suddenly see them take half of their wealth and put it into the, yes. the research institute that is actually working to make sure that you see all this uh, dementia that is now so rampant. Billionaires, who knows that they may end up suffering it or their parents suffered it. 
they invested billions yeah, exactly. in researches. Okay. Yes, to, now to get medication, to get uh, you know discoveries that can at least allow people to live a day longer, more. But Nigerian politicians. Exactly, my ego. No. That is how a true. A, that is how a true mind thinks. That is how a true and 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 just to cut it, just to end it, my ego. So like, I'm gives leave space for the others to speak. Sure. You can see the hypocrisy of the people as well. Mm. You can see how the last time we did that parliament, my ego, I told you about how we have empowered. We keep empowering them. We keep empowering. You see that you can see the sacrifices now. Now, what this new guy now that they saw, what what difference is it going to make? Look at how the people are celebrating. You can see. The level of foolishness of the people as well. Before they were eating too, because now yes, they now continue the tradition. They will continue the suffering, and then they will start hating him to like, oh, it's not different. That's the problem. Nothing, so, nothing, nothing will change, my ego. Just like you always say, mm -hmm. it is the same script. It is, my ego. Let me stop here. That others can call in. Thank you so much, Paul. All right, I appreciate this. Okay, thanks a yeah. lot. Uh, I'll take that. Um, I, I have another caller, but think about that, right? A lot of us see all this so you post Warren Buffett of this world and so many other rich people who are not like uh, famous, like you can see, right? They, they, I mean, they invest billions, hundreds of millions of dollars in research institutes, inst institutions that are researching on into different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, diseases. Some of them, they have suffered them when they were younger and some of them, their parents have suffered them. And once they make so much money, right, they put this money there because they don't want people that are going to be in this world to also suffer what they have suffered or what they are suffering. Nigerian politicians don't think like that. You have uh, this cancer, that cancer. You could not put half of your stolen wealth in researches, in schools, billions of this money to research and do more in saving lives, even if you are going to lose yours. No, to the end, they still want to own the world. I'm so sorry, my caller. Uh, please, you're short. How are you? I'm fine and thank you, my ego. How are you doing? I am very well, sir. How are you? Um, I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for this um, uh, great uh, light you are throwing through things happening in Nigeria. Let me quickly say something. Let me quickly say something, my brother. You see, the hypocrisy of the people in Nigeria is alarming. One, I want to, I want to appreciate the courage from Akira Dolu. Yes, in spite, despite the fact that the government introduced the Ruga then, but he stood against it. And that thing boosted the confidence of the people in the Southeast to support that ESM then. Yes, it helped a lot of people, even those politicians that weren't even in support of that IPOB movement, yet they supported that ESN movement mm -hmm. because of that move that Akere Dolu made then. But what is disturbing is the hypocrisy in the people. Look at the way the people were celebrating because the man died. See, you see the way they were celebrating? Was Meaning... Yes, so it was this bad, and they were never protested. They never hit the street for one day and protested. They were never complaining. So the moment the man died, now they came out of their shell to begin to protest, to begin to shout and chant, yes, 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 without even knowing. They forgot that this man who is about to be sworn in or who has been sworn in is still part of this man. Yes. When all this while they were suffering, yet they never did anything. Now they were celebrating. Oh, 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 yes, we love this one, we love this one. And this one will come in now and continue the trend, and they will continue to die in silence without doing anything until one day, if something happens to this one, they will begin to celebrate again. Now, this gives leverage. You see the religious leaders now. They will take leverage on this. They will tell them, I told you to pray. Hmm. I told you to pray that God will continue to do things. You see, you see, God had removed this one now. So continue to pray for good governance. Continue to pray so that any bad one, God will remove them. Now the people will remain docile. They will keep praying. God, anyone that is bad, remove them. Anyone that is bad. It is not their prayer that removed this man. It was the sickness that this man had that removed him. Hmm. The sickness that this man had killed him. It's not their prayers. But this, you see this, they are jubilating now. Then Sunday, the apostles will tell them, I told you something will happen. You see, God had done it. You see, your prayers had been answered. Your prayers had been answered. But it wasn't their prayer. It was the sickness that this man had that removed him. 
And the, most of them, you will see, they will leverage on that. Yes. Yes, sir. Papa, we speak on. We trust you. You know, already celebrating on the streets. Can we, did we not see that? At least we saw that. And that's just the little one we are yes. in, that, in that space. God knows what it is like in other places too. Unfortunately. My, my heart... My heart is spent. My heart is spent watching the the docility of Nigerians. My heart is spent. They can't do anything. Giving the religious leaders the opportunity to 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 enter them and make them the more and begin to preach that heresy and nonsense they are preaching to them. Pray for their pray for your government. I don't even know if these people don't watch news and see the way other countries we are being governed. No country ever been governed on on the pedestal of prayers. None. But they will tell them pray for your governors pray for them any bad one let death kill him let death come and pick him you see that had taken this one away it doesn't happen like that my heart pained my brother let me yeah. let me just give away for for others to call and yeah. come in thank you so much my brother thank you god bless you have a nice day okay you too thank you very much for that uh at uh you know uh at to heart uh, pouring there i like that and i hope a lot of us who are also watching remember this is meant to be a sober reflection it's not for us to gloat or laugh or do anything or come out this or that because look around you nothing has really changed if there's any lesson to be learned right is to see that you don't end up being remembered uh, you know i mean like for nothing hello there hello my ego hello sir how are you how are you uh, i don't know how you do it i keep honestly every time i watch a program i just thought i don't know how you do it um that was something i mean two things i actually uh i read one and i watched one it says i slay I, I freed 100 slaves i could have saved more if only they know their slaves and exactly that is applicable to nigerians because as much as you're trying to kind of like you people open your eyes see remember no they will still continue to follow their oppressors and you'll be wondering well, these people actually cultivate their own uh, uh, softness in a way. But the, the reason why it pained me is simply because I'm from there. And either I like it or not, I still have my yeah. old folks, maybe my, my dad, mom, uncle, and those innocent kids that are being born into the system again. Those adults, I probably don't even have a pity for them. Because, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. So, but then there's another thing that keep coming to my mind because I, I watch a lot of documentaries and I just watch one that say, uh, stamped from beginning, from the beginning, which was a documentary on Netflix. Is black men cursed? Hmm. Are we cursed? Why can't we just wake up from our slumbers and do something right? I look at the whole of Africa, not just Nigeria. I expect Nigeria to even be wiser. But when you look at all the African countries full of the black people, none of them, no single country could say, yes, we can be boast of 24-7 electricity. We can be boast of good road. We can be boast of this. And these are the people that know Hurricane Katrina, no 170 miles wind, no earthquake, no volcano. Still, imagine if snow happens. Good, good uh, weather. No, no occurrence of yeah. terrible natural the occurrences. Is there, twenty-four that. seven. It, it then you'll be wondering. But then, uh, like like the previous caller said, they will still go to church or mosque. They will still do their hypocrisy, mm -hmm. and they they the the papa will tell them these these are these. And when you look yeah. at the number that actually go out to do their religious thing. The numbers of crime is at the highest. As well. Now you'll be wondering, mm. are you people actually serving God or you are just a devil in, uh, a incarnation or something? Uh, I don't, honestly, my God, I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I think mere thinking of these people it makes me kind of hungry sometimes. Well, you are very you much going to be. Do you get that now? Like some of us get angry that... Uh, we are unable to actually put what together to express how angry we are sometimes, right? However, that is why you have the Maya Gros Diary Politico. So you are not just angry for nothing. You have an idea of why you are. And in most instances, like you are asking us, uh, asking everyone now, why can't we? Why can't we, right? I bet that mm -hmm. those others are also asking themselves, why can't we? Why can't we? And that's how we're going to get there.
Papa. And I think, mm -hmm. and I think there are over 50 millions of Tinobus and all those looters just waiting for their own, their own chance, of course. So yes, how are we going to get out it. of Anyway, let me let others contribute. But thank you for what you are doing. It's just, I don't know how you do it. Honestly, it could have been better if we all wake up and say, look, the worst shouldn't be ruling the best of us. We are not going to be here. Like the, the caller rightly said, why can't our leaders, you know, fund research? The University College Hospital is there, yes. built by Awolowo. Why can't they renovate it and make it? I mean, the, the, the king of Saudi Arabia came there. He, and that is not even like a rumor. It's actually a fact, historical it is a, fact. So but look at us today. We are the well, ones I, who our governor is now dying in German hospital. In German hospital. Uh -huh. Imagine. I'm, have, they, have they ever thought that when 60, was 60, the German yes. chancellor or their, their MP called, came to Nigeria? I'm going to know, Baba. I'm going to Like, if we have to look at it this way, right? The last recorded time uh, that uh, the King of Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, uh, visited uh, that same UCH was put uh, somewhere around there uh, between 1957 and 1961 before he stopped, right? Now let's pick 1961, Baba. So, Yorubas, who used to have uh, the Saudi king 62 hmm. years ago as a guest in one of our teaching hospitals in Yoruba wow. land, that Yoruba people today now have their governor. Dying on that machine in far away Germany. I wow. mean, that's that's not that, that is not progress, it, Baba. Let's tell ourselves the truth. We are not progressing. We are not. Retro. We are retrogressing. We are not progressing. Retro. And then we'll carry our money to go and do pilgrimage. Yes. And we are still poor. That's it doesn't make sense. sense. I know. It doesn't make sense at all. Anyway. Thanks so much. <sighs> Maybe after my generation, maybe something will happen. But I don't see anything happening in my generation. I'm not that old, but at 65, yes, we told them. Do you know, before I, before I quickly go. Yes, sir. Do you know, there's something that uh, I used to tell myself. Take a lesson from that. Yes. You come with nothing, you go with nothing. Wow. With all the power they try to hang on to, with all their 160 million vehicles, with all the houses and everything. Mm. Do they take a pain? Nothing will be taken. How, that, how, how how can human being not think twice Indeed. that I don't even know when I'm going to buy. I don't know the time. I don't know where. Why can't I take it easy? Good night, my ego. Same to you, sir. You have a wonderful evening, sir. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, this, uh, this is going to be like, as we said, a time for sober reflection. You want to own the world? Of course, go for it. But if you have a chance of making an impact in the world, what would that be? And would you do it like not because of uh, what you are going to gain or uh, without considering what you're going to possibly lose? Would you still do it and leave that to the indelible mark? Would you? That is uh, what defines a man who say. But let me take another call here. Yeah. Hello there. Good night, my uh, hey, good afternoon. I mean, sorry, good evening, uh, sir. Good evening. Good. Fine, thank you. How are you doing today? Well, I'm here. Kind of like, all right. Thanks for asking. How are you? Can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can now, please. Okay. Yeah, um... Okay. I think... Um... Uh, is that network or you are just receiving another call that is cutting you off or something so no no i'm not receiving any, i'm not receiving any oh, calls just, network, but you keep going off right yeah. so hopefully it stays now please go on oh is it better now yeah i think it is now yes please. okay yeah no just thank you for what you're doing i mean you i don't think i don't think people will realize the importance or significance of what you're doing right now but hopefully in, in years to come you know, the next generation will watch, you know, your diary and see and hopefully it would make an impact on their lives. You know, um, I watched one of your programs, I think it was a couple of days ago. Um, it was this guy from Liberia, the Liberian guy. Oh, you so know, cool, he made, Everybody's asking me he to made, get him back. Oh, go on, sir. Yeah, he made, he made a very, very valid point. 
And quoting from, um, quoting from Minister Louis Farrakhan, I don't know if people know him, but he said, you know, when you subject a people to over 400 years of slavery and you turn them inside out, you know, you, you, you strip them of their names, of their religions, of their God, you know, that has a... Right. I think uh, that must be network, I think. Yeah, it's probably the network. Can you hear please, me now? Please, yeah, you're back now. Please continue, sir. Okay. You know, Christians talk about the circumcision of the heart, but I think what Nigerians really need is a circumcision of the mind, you know, because, you know, they have been subjected to colonial rule. And you know, like the Liberian guy said, you know, the police, the, you know, institutions, they have, you know, there's this thing, the colonial rule has, you know, over the years instilled in their minds. So it's going to take a lot you know, to to circumcise that mind in such a way that, you know, we talk about revolution, you know, you know, there's there's different types of revolution, like so Shore said. That's right. You know, if we also need this revolution of the mind where people, Nigerians, can, you know, be free. Because to be fair with you, not everyone in Nigeria is free. Some people are still slaves, you know, our leaders included, you know. You know, our leaders, 99.9% of the politicians in Nigeria, they are, they're just lazy. They are, you know, they, we talk about thinking outside the box. Our leaders can't even think within the box, let alone think outside the box. You know, so it's, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I hope and I pray that your diary is around long enough for the next generation to really watch it and hopefully it can help them change their mindset towards how they relate with their leaders, you know, because it, uh, this, this say, system, that, that uh, posterity will judge all of us. If there's something we have to leave behind, yeah. uh, it should be something that is going to make the world that different uh, from how we met, uh, how we met it. But I yeah. kind of uh, dig with you, sir. Go on. Yeah. You know, so I'm, um, I mean, well, we've we've had the opportunity, you know, like you, you're in you're in Scotland. I, I live in England, by the way, you know. So, so we've we've had the uh, we've had the opportunity to travel outside of Nigeria and see how people live. We always say, you know, the little things that government do for their people abroad, you know, is what we Nigerians pray to God for. You know, someone, you know, comedians always have that joke where they say. Oh God, as I'm going home, let there be light. Mm -hmm. That is what you're really sorry that uh, the network kept, uh, you know, kind of uh, breaking us and all that. You see, when you leave Nigeria, things that you always use as your prayer points in Nigeria, uh, they become like normal, regular things that, uh, and sometimes you feel like uh, you don't pray much because most of what you really pray for. There are things that are like you don't need to pray for them. They're like basics, okay? Electricity yeah, exactly. And all that. So yeah, I'm just filling in the gap yeah. for you before you come back. That's you back. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back. Yeah, I mean you you hit the nail on the head. It's just it's just basic things, you know. Our politicians every four years they come out and campaign about electricity, roads. You know, these are things that should be given. You know, you shouldn't even. These are things that should be there. They should campaign about policies mm. or, you know better policies that will favor the people that you know would enhance you know democracy would enhance development would enhance human development as well you know but they come out every four years and it's the same campaign you know and i don't know i think nigerians nigerians as a people you know the the biggest supposed biggest you know black race in the world we need a circumcision of the mind like we need to reorientate our mindset towards how we relate with our so-called politicians. I don't call them leaders. Sometimes we say leaders. They, they, they are not leaders. I mean, what, what is what is a leader? What is a leader? Like this, the 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 gov like, late governor of Ondo State. He just passed away. Okay. The thing is, it's it's in the Bible. Like it, whatever you sow, whatever a man soweth that he shall reap. 
That's right. You know, you may come out and portray yourself as good. Or you may have done some good. But listen, if at the end of the day, what you are after is yourself and your family and you call yourself a leader, you're not a leader. I'm not. You are not, you're not a, le- a leader will lay down his life for his people, just like a good shepherd, you know, but these people would rather have their own people be killed and do nothing about it, that's right. you know, just because they want to protect themselves and their family. <laughs> my good, I just, that's, I just wanted to add my contribution you to this well. and just to agree with that. Yes, um, Seku, Seku, who called the other day, who, who, who really, hit the nail is is a reorientation of the mind because everything is just you know over the years you turn the people inside out it's going to take a lot to re-educate them like make the people have to unlearn and relearn right. you know i think that that is something that is a part of the revolution that we need you know yes. if anything thank you so much uh, for the echoing that yourself okay i appreciate yeah. this as well thank you for that contribution sir you have a good one. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. You too.